What's up everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're looking to get your music reviewed, you can hit up this email that's right here. But today I'm going to hit you up with my thoughts and opinions on this new album from Yellow Wolf called Trunk Music 3. Now Yellow Wolf is a rapper slash country singer slash rock and roller who's coming out of Alabama. And I first heard him when he came out with that song Pop the Trunk. I know he had plenty of projects before that, but that was the first song and video that I had ever experienced from him. And when I saw that video, I was really interested because we had this redneck guy who was really spitting crazy bars over this heavy southern 808 production. It really just stuck out from a lot of stuff that was happening at the time. Time. And that whole country aesthetic reminded me a little bit of what Bubba Sparks was doing back when he came out. After I heard that song, I naturally went and checked the Trunk Music mixtape, and I instantly became a fan of Yellow Wolf because I loved pretty much everything that was happening on that. Now, I'm not going to go over every project he's ever done because he has so many of them out there. You can just see it by looking at his Wikipedia page. But I figured before I got into this album, I'd break down my feelings in regards to some of his other music. So with his debut album, Radioactive, I felt like that was a little bit sloppy and all over the place and certainly not as strong as the Trunk Music mixtape. Then he did have Trunk Music Returns. This was a solid record, but it didn't really capture that same feeling as the original Trunk Music. And of course, I have to shout out that Black Fall project that he did with DJ Paul. I'm not sure if that was an EP or a mixtape. It was only a couple of tracks, but I still think they did call it a tape. It just had heavy bangers on it, that evil aesthetic you would expect from DJ Paul production, and Yellow Wolf was snapping. So that right there is one of my favorite Yellow Wolf projects. Of course, I also had love for his Love Story project. This was an album where he was really fusing the country and rock elements with his hip-hop and I think he pulled it off really well on that project. That was a project that when I reviewed it uh, I gave it a four out of five because I thought it was very good but I gotta say that his whole country thing really started to wear thin on some of the projects that followed up from there. We got this hotel project that I think was some of his weakest work although I do appreciate some of the content on there and Trial by Fire kept with that same country and rock and roll style but really came through with some of his best songwriting. Wasn't a personal favorite of mine because as I said the country slash rock stuff kind of wore thin on me but I think his best songwriting and content was on Trial by Fire, so I still appreciate it. All that said, I was very happy to see that he was coming out with Trunk Music 3, because that's what I wanted to hear from Yellow Wolf, man. I wanted him to get back on these nasty-ass bangers, and leading up to this project, he put out all these freestyles that were just nasty and filthy as fuck, man. I don't know why he didn't put them on here, and that's something I will bring up later on in the review, but those were really dope freestyles, and despite of not having them on here, he still had some great bangers. So, we got TM3. This is the intro track, and I really like how it samples the original Trunk Music song, because it's letting you know that Yellow Wolf is back on that shit. Then we got Catfish Billy 2, which might be my favorite beat with the evil strings. You're also getting some haunting keys on it. And then with the song Rowdy, DJ Paul came through with one of the filthiest beats on here, man. I love the production on this. The bass is like a back massager and your car is just so heavy. And it also kind of reminded me of Master P's classic song, Bout It Bout It. You're gonna hear Rowdy Rowdy chants throughout this song and that very thick bass at the start made me think of that. So it's not really surprising since Yellow Wolf does champion the South and that seemed like a very clear nod to me. So I just thought Rowdy had bass on it that was thicker than Ellen Knox, maybe Violet Myers if you prefer. I don't know, they're kind of similar. You can pick. But I also got to point out that there's an MGK feature on here. That's not that bad. I'm not going to say he snapped on here. I'm not a big MGK supporter or fan, but he didn't ruin this track by any means. Like I saw Machine Gun Kelly featured on here. Then I heard the beat start up and I was like, God damn it. Is he going to get on here and ruin this shit? But he didn't. I thought there were some pretty good flows on this song. And Yellow Wolf throughout this project is snapping like he usually does. I know some people might kind of put him in that mold of a rapidy rap rapper because he does rap fast and piece together a lot of syllables. But I think he has a very distinct style so that's why I've always liked Yellow Wolf when he does it. I think his cadence and delivery is very aggressive most of the time and it does stick out so Yellow Wolf is an artist who I've been following for a while and I do like what he's doing on this project but unfortunately there was also some skippable slash forgettable stuff on this project that really took me out of it like I think it started off really strong and I was like oh shit we are in for nothing but bangers that's going to be a nice cohesive project but then he does take a couple of different turns and some of the bangers on the second half of the project just pale in comparison to the good ones so I'm talking about tracks like Trailer Park Hollywood, We Slum, All The Way Up, which for whatever reason borrows a little bit from Fat Joe's song All The Way Up on the hook. I thought that was a bit of a weird choice. And then even with the song that's called No Such Thing As Free, I like the production, but we have this guy named Doobie on here spitting that he's the shit with the stain like it's cool to compare yourself to a wet fire. So these bangers, they just didn't have Yellow Wolf at his best in my opinion. I didn't think they had his best flows and bars. I also think the features on these songs were pretty weak. So 
you know, I thought they were just kind of weak compared to some of the better tracks that I'd already talked about. So they're not all that awful, but they're not tracks I would come back to when there are these other better bangers. Now I will say Box Chevy 6, which does show up on the second half, certainly is a good banger and you would expect this to be good because of how good the first Box Chevys are. The first five Box Chevys are as spit flies out of my mouth. I don't know if you guys saw it, my screen here. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're good. We're gonna keep rolling. There you go. Is that a little ASMR? When I'm rubbing that like that. Okay, we're getting off track. But anyway, Box Chevy 6. I thought this was a really dope addition to the Box Chevy series. Ritz is on here snapping as well as Yellow Wolf. And even though Ritz does come with some silly bars about fucking dorks at Comic Cons and soccer moms, he still sounded really good on this track. And Ritz is another artist who I'm a fan of. So I like to hear them together on here. We got DJ Paul working some less complicated flows as expected on this song, but he still fits in with that aggressive style that he brings. So that would be another track I would list as my favorite. Now you may have noticed that so far I haven't really spoken much about content content, subject matter, and topics. That's because most of this project doesn't get into that, although there are some moments that do show up. So with the song Drugs, we get this R&B style joint where Yellow Wolf is speaking on his drugs, just the experiences he's had with drugs, I should say, from starting out smoking weed to later getting DUIs and popping pills, sort of the evolution of his drug use. So I did think this was kind of an interesting track. And on Over Again, we're getting this very spacey and atmospheric sing-song of Yellow Wolf, where he's going in on addiction and not needing to drink again or be up in the club again. So there is that sort of thing where he's speaking on heartbreak and addiction coming in. I mean, these are topics that Yellow Wolf has done plenty of times. We know that he has struggled with addiction in the past. Hopefully he's in a better place now. But you do expect this sort of content. So you do get a little bit of that sprinkled throughout this project. Another track I'm sure people are going to talk about is Over Here. Because on this one, he's actually speaking about fake people in the industry. And in the first verse, he's really breaking down this encounter he had with somebody who a lot of people are speculating could be Post Malone or g Easy. Basically just saying he doesn't fuck with them. He doesn't drop any names or anything, so people are just speculating and guessing like they do with any shit like this. But even still, I thought that was kind of an interesting part of the project. I didn't really care for the beat. I thought the plotting piano production was pretty dry, but you know, my biggest gripe with this project is just that it's so uneven. It started really strong and I was really happy with it. The freestyles leading up to this project had me excited as well. But then we got all these tracks that I just talked about that are kind of meh, like they're not awful, but they're not drawing me back into the project and I skip them every time I come back to it. And there were two tracks on here that I just thought were pretty bad. So special kind of bad is my least favorite because I felt like this was a little bit sloppy. There was so much going on with these crazy snares. One minute he's yelling and screaming, the next minute he's singing soft I know that sort of ties into the idea of this you know fucked up love story that he's telling on this song at least that's what I took from it but still I just didn't like it sonically and like I love you is just another very boring somber lovey-dovey track that's not interesting and it doesn't really go anywhere so you know, I was very conflicted with a rating for this one, man. I went back and forth between 3.5 and a 3. At first I was thinking a 3.5 because I did like these bangers, but the more I came back to this project, the more I was skipping a lot of these tracks, man. And at the end of it, I only came out of it with like maybe three or four that I really like. So that's not that great of a ratio. I am gonna go with a three. I thought about a 3.5 for what it's worth, but God damn it, man. I wish he had to cut some of these meh tracks and some of those tracks I didn't like and put some of those freestyles on, man, because some of those freestyles are definitely better than some of these other tracks on here in my opinion but I think if you're a diehard Yellow Wolf fan like if you're into him more than I am and you do like when he does a lot of that singing and that country stuff some of these tracks I didn't like maybe you will like them because he is showing his versatility so you know what I'm just speaking from my point of view as someone who really likes Yellow Wolf when he's making the bangers the country shit is very hit and miss you know when he's singing and doing all that but hey man that's how I feel three out of five feels fair to me let me know in the comment section what you guys think and of course make sure you do that good YouTube and social media Media stuff where you show me love and you show me lots of it thank you for watching everybody so i hit my mic man i do that at the end all the time man. i'm fucking up but either way thank you for watching me with my crazy hands all over the place and i will see you next time